1. This happened to me last Monday, December 5th. I go to a university in central Kentucky, and this Monday, it was the first week of dead week, the week before finals week. My grandma has sent me a text telling me to check my mail for what she calls a care package. This usually means a nice card with a bag of cookies and a $20 bill. My grandma is awesome, and does this pretty often. So naturally, I snapped my computer shut, swiped my keys off the table, and took off to my P.O. box at the end of my apartment complex. I opened the box and retrieved the brightly colored red and green envelope, along with a pile of ads and randomness. I was heading back to my room when literally steps before my apartment door, I swear I felt something slip out of my hands, bounce off my leg, and hit the ground. But when I stopped to get it, there was nothing there. I searched the ground all around me, but there was nothing. It was a straight hallway with nothing it could be underneath or stuck behind. So, brushing it off, assuming it was just my mind, I go inside, open the envelope, cram a $20 bill in my pocket, and start reading the card. K, hope studying is going well. I know finals can be tough, but I know you're tougher. So here's some food money, and I'll keep you in my prayers. Love you, Grandma. This is what the card says word for word, minus my name. I put the card in my bedroom and leave the scraps of the envelope on the kitchen table. Not five minutes later, me and my roommate go to a local diner called Tolly Ho, where I had planned to use the 20 I had in my pocket. But when I go to pay for my food, I reach in my pocket only to find nothing. Very confused and slightly annoyed, I figure I just left it with the card in my apartment, even though I specifically remember putting it in my pocket. Things suddenly get weirder when, as I'm walking up to my apartment, I see a brightly colored red and green envelope on the ground outside my door. I remember thinking, huh, that looks just like the card my grandma sent. I get closer, well, that looks almost identical to grandma's card. I stand over the small red envelope with overwhelming dread. I read the green writing with my address and name from my grandma. It's the exact same. At this point, I'm starting to think I've completely lost it. There's no possible way this could be mine until I suddenly remember that I felt something drop on my way the first time, which brings a tsunami of relief as I snatch up the square envelope and walk into my room still very confused as to how I didn't notice this before and why my grandma would send me two almost identical cards. I open it up, and a $20 bill slides out. I pick it up, and go to put it with my other card, but there's nothing there. It's gone. I search everywhere, but there's not a trace, no paper, no money, nothing. I'm completely baffled, and honestly pissed that I lost a 20. Then, out of nowhere, I'm suddenly hit with this awful feeling like something terrible is going to happen. Or somehow I was in immediate danger. This feeling was the result of way too many strange things happening at once. I walk into the kitchen, and I'm forced to face this terrible feeling head on. I open the card. Okay, hope studying is going well. I know finals can be tough, but I know you're tougher. So here's some food money, and I'll keep you in my prayers. Love you, Grandma. I'm horrified. This was no deja vu or false memory. I'm either 110% crazy, or there was some sort of time slip. I guess what you guys here call a glitch in the matrix. Any theories would be helpful. 2. Sorry in advance, this is all over the place. Writing's not my strong point. So my husband is a major movie buff, particularly horror movies. We have a huge collection of DVDs we go to see movies when they hit theatres. And he even likes these straight-to-DVD B-movies. Anyway, I should mention I have a somewhat bad memory. I was put on Xanax as a child to help manage my PTSD and anxiety, and finally quit taking it when I turned 18. But the damage to my memory had been done. I have trouble remembering faces, names, experiences. But one thing's for sure. I don't have false memories. If I do remember doing or seeing something, you can be sure it happened. I may forget doing something I surely did, but I won't misremember, if that makes any sense. So my husband went to the store and came back home with a movie. He was excited as he hadn't seen it before. It's a movie called The Boy. It's about a doll that's supposedly haunted. Anywho, the minute he showed me the cover, I remembered the movie. I told him we'd seen it already. He insists we hadn't. 
My husband has a close to photographic memory. In seven years, I can honestly say he's never forgotten seeing a movie. The whole movie, I knew the story. It wasn't a deja vu feeling either. It was correct. I had to have seen the movie. The question is when. I honestly have no hangout friends. We have two couple friends, and we've never gone to the movies with them. Nor have we hung out with them without each other. So even if we had seen it with them, my husband would have seen it too. It came out in 2015. Which limits where I could have seen it even more? Also, I don't particularly care for horror movies. They don't scare me. I just think they're too predictable. I don't watch them on my own. In one specific scene, I could remember my husband's reaction. There's a scene where a guy breaks the doll, and I remember my husband saying something along the lines of, Oh shit, they just released the evil entity. May not be a real glitch, but I know I've seen this movie with my husband, yet my husband knows he hadn't. Any feedback is welcome. I tend to be a logical thinker and will entertain any possible explanation. Update. So I pressed my hobby further, telling him how much it was bothering me, and he said he remembers me telling him it was on Comcast On Demand, and me asking him if he wanted me to rent it. But that he said no because we had already rented a lot of movies that month, and he didn't want any added expenses. The only logical explanation I can think of is that I ended up renting it anyway and watching it alone. I sure don't remember watching it alone, though. And like I said above, those movies don't interest me enough to watch alone anyway. Oh well, maybe in another timeline, Hubby and I did watch it. 3. I've always been interested in the paranormal and just recently discovered what a glitch in the Matrix was. After going on Reddit and reading all these stories, I decided to make an account myself and to share some experiences that I now consider glitches, because I have a better understanding of what they are. I literally became a Reddit user half an hour ago, so I apologize in advance if I'm not using this social media site correctly. Technology and I are not the best of friends. First, I would like to give a brief background before I dive into my story. For a while now, my house has been known as being haunted. Countless paranormal things have happened in my house, but I won't go into that. If interested in any of the happenings, let me know. Because of this, the glitch I experienced was not out of the ordinary for my house. Of course, it was wild and confusing, but it was almost expected since eerie things seemed to happen to me in my house, left and right. I also need to explain the setup to my house, since it is critical to understanding my experience. Our living room, kitchen, dining room, front hallway is one big open area. When you are standing in the kitchen, you can look forward and see the living room, look to your left and see the front entryway, and look right and see the dining room. When you are standing in the living room, you can look up and see the staircase that leads to the upstairs where our bedrooms are. There is also a hallway in the corner of the kitchen, leading to my parents' bedroom. However, due to the fact that the main level ceiling only goes so far, you cannot see the entire staircase when you are standing in the kitchen looking up. You can only see about half the staircase. I hope I explained this well enough. I can try to elaborate more if need be. The only sibling I have is a younger sister. We'll call her A. A and I are very different. Our interests, our hobbies, our personalities, and our attitudes. I am more of the serious, studious sister, and she is more of the crazy, loud one. She also gets in trouble with my parents a lot more than I do. Nevertheless, we spend a lot of time together, regardless of how complete opposite we are, simply because she is family. A and I were home alone one night, like most nights when our parents both worked late. A lot of the times I would make us dinner, usually something simple, since I had a lot of homework. This particular night I decided to make mac and cheese, a meal that is easy and is something A and I both enjoy. I call for A to come down, because it is almost ready. I see A at the top of the stairs. I am standing in the kitchen. She is wearing a red top and black pants, and I can see her long brown hair. She dips out of my sight for a few seconds. 
since I can only see half the staircase from where I am standing, and I expect her to arrive at the foot of the staircase any minute. But she never shows up. I think at first, maybe she dropped something and she's picking it up. Maybe she's playing a trick. Is she just slow? I finally call out, hey, are you coming? The thing that happens next is something I will never forget. Yes, I'm right here. A says, walking into the kitchen from my parents' room. I drop the mac and cheese I was holding and my blood runs cold. There is A wearing the same red shirt, the same black pants, and that same hairstyle. My sister was on basically the opposite side of the house one minute, and the other side another minute. I cleaned up the spilled food, trying to decipher what the hell I had just seen. Stuttering, I asked her what just happened. She told me she had been in our parents' room for the last 30 minutes, trying to look for an outfit she wanted to borrow from my mom. At this point, A is 1. confused, 2. scared out of her mind, and 3. mad that I wasted a perfectly good pot of macaroni. I made another batch, and after that night, A kind of forgot about that incident. But it's been replaying in my mind since it happened. Did she teleport unknowingly? Does she have an evil twin? Was it a glitch? I have no idea. 4. I'm 17. Early spring or winter of 2003, probably around 8pm. It was already dark. I'm kicking around my parents' suburban house board, and I decide to go up to the local convenience store for a snack. I get outside. I'm thinking I should drive or walk to the store. It is probably 45 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Snow has been melting like crazy the last few days and my car, parked in the driveway, is covered in a thick layer of salt dust. I took my hands and ran my fingertips along the back window of my car, sliding them back and forth making a sort of idly wavy pattern through the accumulated salt on the back window. I remember this because it was fairly distinct. I decided to walk to the store, three quarters of a mile down a 35 mile per hour suburban road. It's an unusually warm evening. Halfway through my walk, I hear a friendly double honk and look to the road to see my car drive by me. The road is illuminated by streetlights and I get a good five seconds of look at the car as it drives by me. This was absolutely my car, a 10 year old black Jeep Cherokee with a huge dent and scratch in the driver's side door, crooked license plate, tacky white wall tires, half the pinstriping removed, and that same pattern in the salt on the back window that I had just made with my fingers. The same distinct wavy pattern of me running my fingertips through the salt buildup. This is beyond doubt my car, and it absolutely honked at me, as there were no other cars or people nearby as it passed. I wasn't able to see who was driving because I caught it right as it drove past. I watched it go all the way down the road and turn towards the convenience store. So I get to the store. The clerk who knows me and the fam says he didn't see my car. Didn't see anyone from my family come in today. I buy my stuff and book it home. I am furious that someone took the car. That I worked like crazy to buy out for a joyride. I get home and immediately confront my mom, asking why someone, bitch sister I assumed, took my car, and she argues it was just her at home, and my spare key has been in her purse the whole time. We confirm this, and I storm out to check my car. Here's where it gets weird. It's in the exact place I left it. So I go and feel the hood, and the hood doesn't feel warm at all. I pop the hood and feel around the engine also going so far as to grab the exhaust manifold and have it still be cold. Okay, maybe it was such a short ride the car didn't heat up. I start looking around and realize there is a huge puddle of snow melt at the end of the driveway, with no tire tracks through it. But I had left a bunch of footprints from walking through it. There should be tire tracks. I check the size of the driveway, and there is patchy snow on really swampy, soft ground. So it would have been obvious if the car was driven over the grass and not down the driveway. I then proceed to check under the car and the tires for signs of wetness. It was a miserable cold and wet day, but the bottom of the car was free from any sort of spray from the road. 
I even checked the floor mats for moisture from shoes. Nothing. There was no way this car was moved or driven in the last few hours. The whole ordeal was about 35 minutes. I was sitting around, thinking about this later that week, and realized that when I was walking up to the store I was wearing a hoodie, with the name of my favorite band of the minute across the back. If I had seen someone on the side of the road wearing that hoodie, I would have absolutely honked at them because... Man, the Ataris were a sweet band, and that guy had great taste. In fact, I had done it a few times in the past, honked, because I overwhelmingly agreed with someone's pop culture apparel. I was 17, guys. The thing that really freaks me out, that I've never been able to reconcile is, I'm 100% sure I saw my car drive by me. I am 100% sure that it had not moved at all while I was at the store. Creeps me out to this day thinking about it. Fills me with this weird existential dread. 5. I was a freshman in college and it was about the fourth month I was in school. I had moved six hours from my original home to Savannah, Georgia. A town known to be a little spooky and whatever. I had grown bored of my classes one evening and instead of trying to will myself to go to class, I ditched and treated myself to a movie. Things were fine, I got some food, waited for my movie time, and even got in the theatre early to get a good seat. I really didn't need to since the movie I was seeing was probably in its last week of viewing, but I'm weird like that. I think it was me and a woman in the theatre at the time. I settled in and zoned out to the previews and commercials or whatever they had before the house lights dimmed. I then became aware of a really handsome looking older man. I don't remember if he walked up or if he just appeared, but all I knew was that he was really good looking. We get to talking. Just to pass the time and we trade information. He's a heart surgeon from what I remember, and it stuck out to me because my mom has multiple sclerosis and Marfan syndrome, and at the time had survived two open heart surgeries. She's had another since then and is still trucking. So wanting to keep in touch just in case anything happened, I asked for his name. And it came out all garbled. Now, when I mean garbled, I don't just mean, oh, I heard him wrong. No, I mean it literally sounded distorted. I think about it now and all I can picture is him opening his mouth and pixelated garbage spilling forward. I don't even remember being able to pick out vowels or anything. It was like the name he gave was censored or tuned to the wrong station. Thankfully, that's when the house lights dimmed and the real previews were beginning. I thought I could just smile and nod away, letting the movie play out and forget about it. Apparently, that wasn't on his mind. He decided to ask to sit in my row just a seat apart. I didn't want to be rude and I was young and he was attractive so I said yes but I couldn't shake the feeling like something was wrong. I barely remember what happened in the film because I was so focused on his weird and wrong aura. Eventually the movie let out and I booked it. I remember hiding out in my car so I could wait to see him leave before me. He came out eventually, scanned the parking lot, and then left. I don't know who or what he was, but seven years later, it still freaks me out. Hey everyone, Hellfreezer here, and thank you very much for listening to 5 True Glitch in the Matrix Stories, number 20. I want to say thank you very much to everyone who allowed me to use their experiences in this video. I would also, of course, like to say that I understand in reference to story number three, I totally understand A is being very upset by the wasting of that delicious pot of macaroni. It's not an unforgivable crime, you understand. Uh, perfectly forgivable. Unless, of course, this macaroni happened to have uh, hot dogs and mushrooms in it, or dare I even say ham and mushrooms. <laughs> oh yes. Then it would be unforgivable, but failing that, I think, in time, Forgiveness is possible. Okay, let's see, where are we? This will be Thursday. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Paranormal. And then we're looking good for uh, TIFU on Friday. I think I've got everything I need now, actually. And uh, that'll bring us to the end of the week.
I won't be doing any extra stories uh, at the moment this week. I had planned on starting to throw some random extra look uh, fictional stories out here and there. Uh, my voice isn't quite up to it at the moment, so I'm just saving myself to do the regular videos. But as soon as I'm good to go, I'll start recording those. And with that, I think I'm going to head off for now and put the videos together. So until next time, thank you very much for listening and take very good care of yourselves.